pre-calculus, unit one, A4. Okay. We're going to uh, do a, a nice little activity here to try to help you uh, take an equation and match it up with a graph and then vice versa. If I give you a graph, you can come up with an equation based on the parent function and uh, the translations left, right, up, down, the reflections uh, over the x or y axis, and also uh, whether it's stretched or shrunk vertically. Right? So uh, this is a nice little synopsis of all of the points that you should, uh, you should really uh, write down or you know, highlight or take note of. This is uh, your list of things to remember uh, from all the examples that we're going to be doing. Now, we're not going to do a whole lot of them. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. I've cut it down from last year's, uh, but let's, uh, let's look right at them. I'm going to, I'm going to show you uh, these graphs on Desmos, uh, just because I think that uh, it'll be a lot neater than me writing on uh, this little sweetheart of a, of a tablet. But let's look at question one. Okay, it shows us a parent graph uh, of y equals x squared, and it shows uh, a transformed graph. So you would take the parent graph and do some things to it. So let's look at exactly what is being done to it. Um, so here on Desmos, we've got uh, we've got these two graphs. Okay. Now. Uh, this red one, the dashed one, this is y equals x squared, or f of x equals x squared. Notice that the vertex is at zero, zero. The blue graph, again, is y equals x plus four squared minus five. So notice where the vertex of this is. As it's labeled in your picture as well, it's at negative four comma negative five. So what happened from the parent function to the transform function? How did we get from the red to the blue? Well, we're going to look at the vertex. The vertex apparently moved one, two, three, four units left and five units down. Okay. Those two things are translations. Those are types of transformations. Now notice how we graphed the x squared uh, parent graph. You start at the vertex. You go one to the right, and then this is x squared. So you go one squared up, which is one. You could go one to the left. Negative one squared is still one. Go back to the vertex. Let's say we go two to the right. Two squared is four. One, two, three, four, right here go two to the left and up four, okay? You could do three and nine, okay? And you will find the, that point in negative three, nine, okay? So that's how we graph X squared. How do we graph this one? Well, it's still a one in front of the X squared, okay? Or the parentheses that have the X plus four in the squared. So we're still gonna go from the vertex, right one, and then up one squared, left one, up one squared, right two, up two squared, so up four, left two, up two squared. And then you can go right three, up nine, left three, up nine, okay? There is no stretching from the red graph to the blue graph, okay? There's no stretching, but there are two things. We have a move to the left and we have a move down. Okay, so let's look at those equations and see what should be a hint about how we could come to that graph without a graphing calculator. So here we are back with our, uh, uh, back with our um, note sheet here. Uh, if you would take a look at this right here, there's a plus four. The plus four is inside of the grouping symbol, in this case, parentheses. It's in there with the X. So anytime you see X 
plus a number. If you see this, you know that we're going to go left. Okay. We're going to go left. These go together. If you see x plus a number, we're going to go left. So this right here told us we're going to go left four units. Okay. And then this minus five, okay, the minus five had it drop down five units. So anytime you see a minus with a number behind it, a minus five or minus six or minus two or minus one, okay? That is going to be down. Notice I didn't put X minus, okay? This is going to be, this is going to be outside of any grouping symbols that have the X inside of them. Okay, so this minus five tells me that the parent function is going to move down five units. Okay, so that's what we see from question or example one. Let's move to two. So you can see uh, the equations on your sheet, okay, on your uh, question two, on your notes. Okay, so you can see what these two are. The red, I have made a dashed line here in Desmos. Uh, the red is the square root of x, y equals the square root of x. And then the transformed graph is y equals three times the square root of x minus five. And then all of that is plus one at the end. Okay, so here is your square root of x. Now we don't have a vertex like we did with the parabola, but we do have a starting point. That starting point for the uh, red parent graph is zero, zero. Now I can see three things that happen to this graph in order to make it into this transformed graph. Okay? So one thing is we've moved the vertex from zero, zero to five, one. Okay. We've moved it five units to the right and one unit up. So let's look at that first. Let's, let's look at the translations. So if you look at your equation, right, you can see that this is five units to the right. Well, where's the five in your equation? Well, there's a minus five with the X under the square root symbol, which is a grouping symbol. Right? So one thing that we can gain out of this is that if it's X minus something, you're going to move to the right. Then outside of that symbol, there's a plus one. Well, there's a one right here, okay? If you look at the starting point, there's a five comma one. So that went up. So we started at zero, zero, went right five with the minus five. Then outside of the square root symbol, we went up one. Okay, so that gives us the little piece of knowledge that if there's a plus a number, outside of the grouping symbol, you're going to go up. Your parent graph is going to rise, okay? So those are two out of the three things I can see here. The third thing that we're going to look for, okay, other than the uh, reflection, by the way, this one starts at a starting point and it goes up to the right. The blue one also starts at a starting point and starts rising to the right. So there's no reflection. But if you notice with the red one, this is the square root of X. If I go right one, the square root of one is one. So we go right one and up one, and that point is on your graph, okay? And then the next perfect square is four. So you go right four and up two. So you've got four comma two, because the square root of four is two, okay? Now, the next perfect square would be nine. So you could come over nine to the right, square root of nine is three, up three, right? And you could go over to 16 because my graph is much larger than uh, the one that's on your, your paper. And then at 16 to the right from the starting point, we go four units up because the square root of 16 is four, 
right? Now, is that the case with the transform graph? When we go one to the right, do we go the square root of one up? The answer is no. We actually go one, two, three up. So that's three times as, um, as steep or three times the quickness in rising, okay? It's stretched by a factor of three, okay? So we have the vertex has moved five right and up one, and the graph itself is stretched vertically by a factor of three. So let's go back to our note sheet and let's, uh, let's, uh, let's write that down, shall we? Okay, so on the note sheet, if we see x minus a number, if it's x minus, in this case, it's x minus five, x minus five indicates that we're going to go right that number of units. So that right there tells us we're going to go right five units. Okay, next one. If we see a plus a number, plus a number, again, outside of the grouping symbols, so plus one in this case, that plus one indicates we are going to move our graph up one unit. Okay, the parent function, the, the, this one isn't a vertex, this one's a starting point, but you take that critical point, which on all of our parent functions is, is uh, zero, zero, and you're going to move it, in this case, right five, up one, in these two cases. Okay, now the stretch, okay, if you go back to the, um, to the page where it has that list, the very, the very top, of this page here, you'll see that it talked about absolute value of A is greater than one, okay? Well, A is just any number that's in front of the grouping symbol, okay? It's not under the grouping symbol, it's in front of the grouping symbol. If that number has an absolute value bigger than one, so if it's larger than positive one or smaller than negative one, okay, it's not like, one half or three fourths or four fifths or a negative five sixths, okay? All of those numbers are between negative one and one, okay? If it's not, then this is going to be a vertical stretch. And this one happened to be by a factor of three. By a factor of three. It'll get written. Yes, it will. Re. All right, perseverance. Okay. All right, let's move on to question three. Okay, question number three actually is is uh, diagrammed and graphed here so nicely that. Uh, I don't think we need to go to the, the Desmos site. Okay, let's look at the parent function, which is in red, uh, f of x equals the absolute value of x. So once again, you see that the vertex, that's our critical point we're gonna look at, is at zero, zero. And it goes to zero, three. Well, what's the difference? Obviously it went up three. So once again, there's a plus outside of the grouping symbol, okay? So if there is plus a number, okay, outside of the grouping symbols, okay? We've gone over this before. And that indicates, okay, the plus indicates we're going to move up. Okay, so that plus three tells us we're gonna move up three units. 
all right? The one half definitely tells us something about this graph as well. And then the negative tells us a third thing about this graph. So this graph had three transformations done to it. Okay? It had the move up. It also had that one half. Now notice one half is between negative one and one. Its absolute value is not greater than one. So it does not vertically stretch. This is actually a vertical shrink. Vertical shrink. It got smushed. Okay, it got smushed and wider. Okay, it may actually got wider because of the um, because of the the vertical smush. Horizontal is going to get wider. Okay, so it is shrunk by a factor of one half. Okay, now the nice thing about uh, graphing these absolute values, which we you did a lot in Algebra 2 uh, in the beginning of the semester, uh, you can basically rise and run with whatever number is in front of them. Like, there's a 1 here. We just didn't, you know, we just didn't write a 1 in front of the absolute value. I mean, the slope is 1 over 1. You know, rise 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1. And you did it both ways. Rise 1, run to the left. Rise 1, run to the left. Rise 1, run to the left. So, the slope is where the M would be in a line, okay? Except it's going positively and negatively as long as you know which way the graph is opening, okay? This one, because of the negative, okay? The negative is going to reflect this graph, right? Now, check this out. The negative is not inside with the X. It's outside with the Y, which means it's going to change the Y. Okay? It changes the Y coordinate. So if it changes the Y coordinate, it goes from up to down or down to up, and it would jump over the X axis. So it's reflected over the X axis. So any negative, any negative A, okay, any negative A, if the number in front of the grouping symbol is negative, okay, or if it's a number in front of X, if there is no grouping symbol. So if you have like 5X squared, okay, that's a positive 5. A is positive. If you have negative 3X squared with no parentheses, negative 3, is your A. So a negative A will reflect over the x-axis. It will reflect over the x-axis. Okay. So let's just look at this graph and let's make sense of that. Maybe we actually will uh, uh, spread it out a little bit since I wrote on it. Let's look at the Desmos site. Ah, that's better. Okay. Lots of room to look here. So again, here is your parent graph, y equals the absolute value of x, and you can see rise over run, one over one, one over one, one over one, one over one. You can see that the vertex went from zero, zero to zero, three. It moved up three. You can certainly see that instead of opening up, it opens down. So there's a negative A. There's a negative coefficient in front of the uh, grouping symbol. And then lastly, okay, as we said, the slope on the red one is 1 over 1. It's going up to the right. And if you go to the left, it's up to the left. Okay? This one is open down, the blue one. Check it out. Rise negative one, okay, we're just gonna rise one because we know it opens down. We're gonna rise down one, and we're gonna run two to the right. We're also gonna rise down one and run two to the left. Okay? Um, down one, right two, 
down one, right two, down one, right two. And over and over again, the slope is consistent okay? because each half of the absolute value function is linear. Okay? All right. So that's why the blue line or the blue graph is wider. Okay? It was compressed. It was shrunk vertically, which made it appear to be uh, stretched horizontally. And let's look at number four. Okay, I noticed that um, in question four on your note sheet, we didn't put the parent graph in. So I took the liberty of including the parent graph uh, in the Desmos page here. So the red one, the red graph is uh, your transform graph that you have right on your paper. And it does have this critical point, right? Now that critical point, I'm gonna make note of the, the parent graph here. This is y equals x cubed, the blue dashed line, okay? The critical point, it's not a vertex because a vertex has gotta be either a maximum or minimum point. Um, this one here to the right, it's going up and to the left, it's going down. But it is a critical point, and we do use zero, zero in this parent graph because we call this an inflection point, an inflection point. Because on the left of the inflection point, we call this concave down, right? Um, if we had, a, uh, if this were part of a bowl and the cereal were in it, it'd be on the floor. It would be down on the floor because it's kind of, it's curved downward. And then after this point, it's concave up. Okay. If you had cereal in the bowl and it's concave up, you would keep some of the cereal in the bowl. Okay. Hopefully all the cereal, if it, you know, is a little bit longer on this concave up uh, portion, this interval. Okay. But uh, it goes from being curved down to curved up, concave down to concave up. So zero, zero is a special point. Okay, and we are going to be using our translations based on the zero, zero point in X cubed, right? So the inflection point in the red transformation is at two zero. It is two units to the right, okay? So one thing that was done to the blue graph here is it was moved two units to the right. The second thing that was done, I think you can see that uh, the blue graph, the parent graph starts down at negative infinity, and then it's always increasing to the right. The red graph starts at infinity on the left, and it's going down to the right. So there was some sort of a reflection there, right? Uh, and it's, you know, take a look at where the negative symbol is. The negative symbol is outside of the grouping symbol. So just like we mentioned previously, if the negative sign is outside of the grouping symbol, okay, so it's a negative A, then that means we are going to reflect the graph over the x-axis, okay? So yeah, if we, if, we, uh, if we took the original graph, the blue one, and we stuck a negative in front of it, it would flip it or over the x-axis, okay? This one happens to me, move two units to the right and then flipped, okay? So now let's go back to our note sheet and write that down, okay? So there you have it. Uh, the minus two inside with the x indicates that the vertex was first moved right two units, and then the negative outside of the grouping symbols indicates that we reflected uh, the graph over the x-axis, or in this case, just we reflected it um, vertically, okay? So now the rest of these questions are you tries. So I would encourage you to hit the pause button and you try these, as it says, like number one, it says, without using a calculator, sketch the graph of the absolute value of x minus four minus one, okay? On the same axis, because we're giving you the parent function. So hopefully you can see what that minus four and that minus one does, and then you can accurately graph it from there. 
So then graph both of those on the calculator on Desmos, or if you've got your graph and calculator, just graph it there on Calculate 84. And then you can verify that your written graph matches the calculator graph, okay? So pause it now. I'm gonna go ahead and do them, okay? So uh, I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, one, okay? Unpause. So if you have, if you paused it and you did question one or you went beyond, great. Um, we're gonna start doing these here now, okay? So I'm gonna go to Desmos and we're going to graph these, um, you know, as you would. First, I'm gonna put use points and go through it and then we'll, uh, we'll just, you know, put the, the functions in and see what Desmos looks like, okay? Here we go. Okay, here we go with question one. Here's the parent graph, y equals absolute value of x, right? And you can see that we rise one and run one and all that good stuff. All right, so here's the deal. We now have absolute value of x minus four minus one. That minus four is in with the x, so we're gonna move right four, and the minus one is outside of the grouping symbol, those absolute value symbols, so we're gonna move down one. Okay, so we are going to look at the point negative four, negative one, boom. Okay, so this is where our new vertex should be at. Okay, we move four units to the right and one unit down. Okay, now before I, I hit this one over here, or this button, and you see the entire graph, let's get some more points. Now, notice that we have the minus four, we have the minus one. There is no negative in front of the absolute value brackets. There's also no A other than just the invisible one. So what is the slope of absolute value? It's rise one, run one, rise one, run one. So if I'm here and I rise one, run one, okay? For you, you can just put the dot in, but for me, I'm gonna go five comma zero. I gotta put parentheses around it. Okay, we're gonna label that. Actually, don't need to label it, that's fine. Okay, and if I go rise one, run one to the left, I'm gonna be at, where is that, three zero? So three zero. Okay, right, don't need to label that one either. Then you would rise one, run one again, rise one, run one again. Okay, let's see if that looks like our graph. It does, okay? So you can see the vertex was moved four units to the right, one unit down. So instead of a zero, zero, it's a four, negative one. And we have the same uh, width, okay? It is not narrower than the original. It is not wider than the original. It's the same uh, width as the original absolute value question. Okay, now let's go on and look at question uh, you try number two. Okay, so if we begin with the parent function and we're looking at number two, uh, we're going to go based on this graph, we're going to graph x plus three cubed minus one. Okay, so there's a plus three and there's a minus one. So that tells me that plus three means we're gonna move left three units, and the minus one tells me we're gonna move down a unit. So we're gonna be right there at negative three, negative one. So three to the left, down one, bang, we got it. Okay, now the cubics are a little bit, I think more difficult to graph just because, you know, the absolute value, it's up one over one, up one over one, okay? To graph these, one at least uh, four more points. Two to the right of your, uh, your inflection point and two to the left of your inflection point. So starting at this inflection point, that's important, starting here, we're gonna go right one and then one cubed is one. So notice in your original, it was one, one, right one, 
up one. Write two, what's two cubed? Two times two times two, eight. So write two up eight, okay? If it was three, three cubed is 27. That's off of the graph, okay? But we go one, one, two, eight. Same thing the other way. One to the left, down one. Two to the left, down eight. So two negative eight, uh, negative two negative eight is also a point on here. Okay, so let's do that with the uh, with the the transform graph. Right, since there's no negative in front over here, there's no negative a. We're going to keep it down to up, down to the left, up to the right. So let's go to the right. Let's go right one up one. Put a dot right here. That dot would be at negative two zero. So negative two comma zero, put my parentheses there. And let's keep these all, yeah, actually we'll, we'll keep that, okay? Now from the green, we're gonna go two to the right and up two cubed or, two, or eight. So you're gonna go up to negative one comma seven. So negative one comma seven, okay? So you're gonna have these little babies right there. It's gonna be going up. Now we gotta to go to the left, okay? So one left, we're gonna go down one, okay? One cubed is one. So to the left, negative one, down one. So that would be the point negative four, negative two. So negative four, comma, negative two, put parentheses, and let's, let's make that one purple to correspond to the other purple one there, okay? And then to correspond with this black one, start at the green. We go two left and down eight, okay? So two left, down eight, we're at negative five, negative nine. Okay, negative five, negative nine. Let's change that one to black to correspond to the other black dot. Okay, here you go. So green is our inflection point. We went up one over one from the green. We went right two, up two cubed. Left two, down two cubed. So let's see if our transform function goes through it. Oh, look, that's great, All right? So what were our transformations? Our transformations were three units left, one unit down. No reflection, no stretch, no shrink, okay? Let's look at the you try question number three. Okay, so for question three, uh, they give us the graph, y equals x squared, the parent graph of the quadratic function family. Now, without a calculator, we're gonna sketch this one, two times x plus three squared minus one. Okay, seems reasonable. All right, now, what are we gonna do to this red graph? Okay. pay great attention to what we're about to do, you know, walk through it, okay, go back and rewind it, watch, watch it over and over if you need to, okay, it's very important stuff, so, all right, let's, let's see, what are we going to do? We're going to do all the pluses and minuses first, that's key, so we're going to do the plus three and the minus one, so plus three is inside with the x, so we're going to go left three, the minus one is outside of the grouping symbol, so I'm going to go down one. So negative three, negative one should be where my vertex is going to be. So negative three, negative one, boom, okay? So there's my vertex. Now, is my graph going to open up or is it going to open down? Okay, what is the direction? Well, in the parent function, it goes up to the left and up to the right. Is there any negative A that's gonna flip so that instead of up, up, we go down, down? No, there's no negative in front of this two, okay? So I do know that when we rise, it's gonna be going downward. We're gonna rise downward, okay? So let's start at the vertex, okay? At the parent function, again, we go right one, up one squared for one. Right two, up two squared 
for four. Left one, up one squared for one. Left two, up two squared for four. And then you keep going. You know, right three, up nine. Left three, up nine. So the only difference here is we're going up, but we're gonna go up with a vertical stretch. It's gonna get thinner faster. Vertical stretch of two. So instead of going right one and up one, we're gonna double that up. So it's gonna go right one up two. So this point here that I would put a dot on if I were you is negative two comma one. So negative two comma one, all right? Make that black, that sounds good. Now we're gonna do the other side of the parabola. We're gonna go left one and then up one times two. So we're gonna be at negative four comma one. Negative four comma one. Let's make that one black to correspond to the other one. Okay. All right, so we've got the beginning here. Now, if we go two to the right, we would usually go up two squared, so up four, one, two, three, four. But we have to double that up, double the four, so we go up five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to that point, put a dot there. That's gonna be negative one, seven, negative one, seven. Okay, we'll make those blue, awesome. Okay. Go back to your vertex. We're gonna to go two to the left, and we're gonna go up eight. So that's gonna be at the point negative five, seven. All right, so negative five, seven. We'll make this one blue to just give a good visual to see that this blue corresponds to this blue. Okay. I went two to the right, up, up uh, eight, two to the left, up eight. The black ones, I went right one, up two, left one, up two. Okay, now let's look at our graph. Boom. That's exactly what it looks like. Powerful visual, um, like proof that we did these steps correctly. Okay, next up, question four. All right, here is the parent function for number four. This is y equals the, absolute, uh, the uh, square root of x. So this is the square root family, parent function. Notice the starting point is at zero, zero. Then we go right one, and then up the square root of one, which was one. We start at the vertex, uh, the uh, starting point. Again, it's not a vertex. Start at the starting point. We go right four, because four is a nice perfect square, because the square root is two. We go up two. The next perfect square is nine. So back to your starting point. We go nine to the right. We go up one, two, three, okay? If I wanted to go all the way to 16, 16 has a square root of one, two, three, four. So we go 16 to the right and up four, okay? This isn't a two-sided like the parabola and the absolute value. We don't go right and left and do the same mirror image. This is a one-sided, one-way street uh, type of a function. So let's see if we can graph this, which has got, I see three things here. I see the plus two, I see the plus three, and I see the negative symbol outside of the grouping symbols, okay? So first thing first, all the pluses and minuses. Remember, this is a negative, that's not a minus, okay? If you don't think so, put it in your calculator as a minus and not a negative and it'll give you an error. Okay, the plus two is inside with the X. So that tells me that I am going to um, go two units to the left. And I'm going to go, because of the plus three outside, I'm gonna go up three units. So instead of having a starting point at zero, zero, put your starting point at negative two, three, negative two, three, oh, purple starting point. All right, we've got the plus two and the plus three taken care of. So now we have to think of direction and vertical shift, or not vertical shift, uh, vertical stretch or shrink. So direction, there's a negative. 
That negative tells me that instead of the direction the parent function goes, we're going in the exact opposite direction. So instead of rising to the right, we are going to have a function when we graph this, it's going to fall to the right, okay? It's going to flip vertically and it's going to fall to the right. Now, how much is it gonna fall, okay? The parent function goes one, one, four, two. It throws that square root. If there was a number in front of the uh, square root, like a negative three, then we would triple our y values when we go up or down, in this case going down. There isn't here. We're just going to do the same exact um, rate of increase. So we're just going to change the direction instead of rising up like the parent function does here, we're going to rise down. So starting at the vertex, we go one unit to the right. And when we go one unit to the right, we are going down the square root of one. So it's going to be a point right here. You're going to have a point at negative one, positive two. So let's put that point in at negative one, comma, two. All right, let's label that other guy here. Okay, negative one, two, boom. Okay. From the starting point, we go two, uh, we want perfect squares. Perfect square, four. Four is perfect square. Okay, one was a perfect square, we went one right. Now let's go four to the right because it's perfect square. One, two, three, four. And then the square root of four is two, but again, we're changing direction, so we're going down two. So it'll be right here. That's it, two comma one, two comma one. Okay. These can be all different colors because they don't have any uh, corresponding uh, points to them. Let's keep going. Let's go with the next perfect square. Let's go right nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now the square root of nine is three. The only thing that's changing is the direction. We go down one, two, three. So that's seven comma zero. Seven comma zero, whoop, zero. Okay, so let's hit this button right here and see if we have the right graph. Love it when that happens. Love it when that happens. If there was somebody here, I'd high five them with gloves on, of course, with gloves on, or air high five, six feet, six feet, okay? So four looks good, four looks good. Now we're gonna switch over to the, uh, the tablet and look at number five, we'll finish up. All right, we finish up with question five now. This one is not asking us to graph, which is, you know, hopefully by now you're not too, uh, too worried about the graphing. Um, I think that, you know, the graphing, we just did the steps pretty methodically. And I think that if you go back and you, you keep checking it, um, you know, do it until you can do it on your own. All right. Keep watching it and learning from it until you can do it on your own without any help. Uh, and then check it with your calculator. Right? And you're going to be in good shape. Okay. So number five, derive the equations for the following functions then you can verify with the graphing calculator uh, or Desmos that you are correct. So the first one has been done for you. So the parent function, parent function was x cubed. So they went three units to the right. So to the right means it's gotta be inside with the x in the grouping symbol. So to the right is a minus the number, so minus three. Okay, and eight units down, eight units down, up and down, it's gonna be outside of the grouping symbols, and that's the minus eight. So your answer is given to you here, x minus three, all cubed, subtract eight. Okay, let's look at b. We have f of x equals, So we start with square root of x, okay, square root of x. Now we're gonna go four left, 
and we're not going to go up or down. So the four to the left tells me that we're going to go plus four under the radical. Okay, make sure you're inside the grouping symbol. We can go right ahead over here. We're going to have plenty of space for that. So x plus four means we're going to go four units to the left. Now it says it's also reflected over the x-axis. So reflected over the x-axis means that we've got a negative a. It doesn't say that we're stretched, so it's not a negative two or negative three a. Um, it's just negative and then root x plus four. Okay. If you wanna take your Desmos or your graphing calculator and go ahead and type this into your calculator, you should see that it moved four units left and reflected over the x-axis. And I've done plenty of it. Uh, we can do it in class if you need it, but I think we are going to move on here to the C. Your parent function is the absolute value of x. So you start with the absolute value of x and it says we are going to start with this we're going to reflect it over the x-axis and it's translated up nine okay i like the truth to do the translations first okay the pluses and the minuses up nine tells me it's going to be outside of the grouping symbol and there's going to be a plus so plus nine reflected over the x-axis means we've got an a that's negative so the negative is outside of the absolute value symbol that's it. Go ahead, graph that. Verify that it went nine up. Okay, it raised up nine and then it flipped. Okay, so it's going to be opening down, not stretched, not shrunk. Okay, let's look at D. Parent graph is y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared. Okay. We're gonna translate it right six. So if it's left right, that means that we gotta make a set of parentheses because to the right means we gotta go minus inside after the X, it's X minus to the right. So X minus six and we need the squared, right? Now the only other thing it says is that it's stretched by a factor of two. So stretching it, Right. Stretching it means you're going to have your A that's going to be either larger than one or smaller than negative one. Right. So a factor of two, and there's a two over here. Okay, graph that on your calculator along with y equals x squared and see if it is wider, it should be twice as wide, and it should be moved six units to the right. Okay, now this last one, we start with x squared. We're gonna go three units to the left, vertical shrink, reflected, and six units up. Again, I like to do the, the ups and the downs and the lefts and the rights first. So I'm gonna take care of that right off the bat. So the X squared get moved three units to the left. So left three means you got X plus three. Okay, in the squared. Okay. Six units up. That means there's a plus six outside of the grouping symbol. Okay. Vertical shrink of a half. That tells me that the, the A has a half in it. And it's reflected over the x-axis. So that means the a must be negative. Done. Okay. You take this, you graph this along with graphing the parent function, and you should be able to go through this description. Is, it, is the vertex three units to the left and six units up? Okay. Is it reflected over the x-axis? So is it opening down? And finally, is the shrink one half? So instead of 
opening up quickly, it should be opening up wider because it is vertically shrunk, which means it's, it's fatter, it's horizontally wider. Okay, all right, that is the day four notes. Hope you enjoyed them. Um, you know, looking forward to the day four, day five quiz, I hope. Uh, do lots of these for practice and, uh, and get good at it. Okay? Translations, transformations, parent functions. See ya.